because of um, Baroque dance started is intricately linked with the music and musicians, um, composers would collaborate with dancers, you get a, a really interesting mix. And in France, particularly, you find that a lot of the musicians would actually know how to dance. So the um, worry and concern about playing at the correct tempo wasn't really an issue for them. Um, whereas today, I think a lot of musicians don't know how to dance or haven't experienced it. But saying that, there's always going to be a varying tempo. There's no one absolute tempo in which you should take a particular dance. For instance, if you have a gavotte, there's numerous gavottes in extant in notation for us. That's how we know how to do them. Just as you have your music, we have a notation specifically for Baroque dance. So with that, it makes it easier to know what you're supposed to be doing. But we have a vocabulary of about 20 basic steps, and most of those can be danced in duple, triple, and compound duple time. So they're adapted to fit the musical bar. So I could do um, the same dance steps in a, a gavotte, and I could actually then do them in a bure. But even so, I could do probably most of those steps also in a, something like a saraband or a courant or a jig. So um, there's a lot of interplay between them. So when somebody says to me, oh, show me a gavotte dance, you know, they assume that'll be the only one, but of course it's one of many. And I'm just going to share my screen. and just show you a little bit. I'm not gonna give you a lesson in Baroque notation, but I just want to show you a couple of examples. This would be a step. We always read from the pinhead and this would be the angle of the foot. And these little action signs tell you what to do. So this is a bend sign and that's a foot position shown a bend. There's a rise, a spring, a slide, the foot is in the air. You just touch the toes to the ground. This is a fall and this is aerial beaten steps. We have symbols for the turns. OK, we have links, lines of liaison, which give us the timing, not always 100 percent accurate, but generally so. And we have then the rests and bar rests. OK, and we have symbols for taking hands and letting go hands. And here. This is just an example of a basic step unit we call the pas de bourree. It's also known as the fleur, eh? And this is how it fits in to this musical bar. This is the bourree. And it says here, bend, place, rise. And it says first step. And that together is known as a demi-coupe. And then you have numerous steps after it. So you have a bend, place, rise, which pushes to accent the downbeat of the music. And then you have steps afterwards. So this same part of beret here is shown here in triple time again at the end of the musical bar. So for Baroque dance, the end of the musical bar is actually the beginning of our Baroque step. OK, so we'll be bending at the end of the musical bar on beat three and triple. OK, and compound duple time. If we're counting in two, again, we're, we're bending at the very end of the musical bar to do our part of a race step. So um, let's just get rid of that for the moment. So I'm going to put myself um, on speaker view and I'm hoping that some of you would like to get up and have a little go of dancing. Before we do that, I'm just going to read what Matheson says about the character of the gavotte. It was really interesting in the 18th century, in the late 17th and 18th century, how they were really keen to sort of codify dance and make it sort of an academic um, exercise like all the, the um, academies that were coming up um, in those periods. And so analysis of the music uh, for dance was one of the things that were done. So this is Matheson, German. The gavotte, whose affect is truly jubilant joy. The hopping quality of the gavotte is its true property. 
And Quant says a gavotte is almost equal to a rigodon. It is. It has, however, a steadier movement. The gavotte, as I said earlier, we could do all the same steps from a gavotte into a bure, but it has a different feel, it has a different character. So for those of you who would like to get up and have a little go, okay, um, I will um, just go over some basic things. And if we're going to, can I, um, how many people are going to be joining in? Is it the few of you that have got your cameras active? Yeah, okay, great. And there might be some people who can't have their cameras and or they're just a bit shy and they're going to be joining in too. Um, now, as we go along, I'm happy for you to unmute and ask questions rather than wait till the end, because it might then um, help if we do it as we go along. OK, so here we go. So in order to do a little bit of um, movement, I think it'd be really important that if we actually do a little bit of um, warming up it uses the feet a lot so for baroque it's the first time we use what's known as turnout so renaissance dance if you're doing any steps from the renaissance they're always done with with parallel or just like slightly natural turnout okay but for baroque that's extended and so we use the buttock muscles in order to turn out so if you have your feet parallel and together you can just open the toes i'm using the tops of my legs and my buttock muscles to open and close so the whole leg is then turned out from the hips so when I do a bend I'm making a sort of diamond shaped window and coming back up so bend and straighten and bend and straighten and also we can go on to a rise and we're pressing into the balls of the feet and the heels are lifted just a little way off the ground and lower and bend and straighten and rise and lower and bend and straighten and rise and lower and of course we can't really spend as much time as i would like for us to do the warming up otherwise we wouldn't get on with actually um, doing some work so let's just push the ball the foot so i'm bending my knee and i'm lifting my heel off the ground and i'm pressing into it so i'm making sure that my knee is going to the center of my feet and my feet, um, the ball of the foot is right through the center. The weight is on the whole of that foot. I'll just do a few of these. Other side, and a press and down, and press and down, press and down, and press and down. Change, push, and two, and three, and four, and change, and press, and two, and three, and four. Bend again and straighten the knees and rise and lower. Now that bend to a straight leg or to a rise, or even in a jump, is known as a mouvement. Okay, and we have those in all of the Baroque steps in some form or another. So let's have a little roll through the feet and just walk around. That can be parallel, it doesn't matter. It's just to, to push off the back foot and warm up the insteps. The five positions of the feet were codified, so if anybody who's done ballet, you'll recognize the names of steps. This is beginnings of ballet. And it's only now that we call it Baroque dance. It was just um, caught ballet. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have our heels together, toes apart, and that's known as first position. And then heel to an instep, either foot in front is third position, and heel to toe is fifth position. But actually, they're interchangeable, so don't worry about fifth, third is fine, and first. And the open steps are second, and heels and toes are level, and fourth. But when we do a gesture, if we were doing a gesture to the side, that would actually go to our Baroque turnout, which is roughly 90 degrees. So we would actually have the leg gesture to the diagonal as opposed to the side. That's only for stepping. So when we do a Baroque step, we're going to do our basic part of beret. All we're doing is transferring the weight, passing through first to move forward or backwards. And if you go sideways, you can cross the foot in front or behind. If any of you have done Renaissance dance, our part de beret basically is a double, but with turnout. So I mentioned 
the demi coupe the ben place rise so i'm just going to go over that but this is quite a tricky thing to do so um i just want to show you because as musicians you want to push to the first beat of the bar so if i start with weight on one foot i'm going to do this way here and i count in four crotchets one two three i'm actually going to bend on four and my other foot is off the ground the heels are touching and that is the beginning of my baroque step my bend and i'm going to place the ball of the foot forward the heel is off the ground and then i rise up and join so that would be bend place join and that is known as a demi coupe so that bend to the rise whether i'm rising on the toes or just straightening my legs is a movement but the actual transference of weight is known as a demi coupe and then we add extra steps on i don't need you to worry about doing that because it is actually not as easy as it seems because the first beat of the musical bar is so strong it's very easy to place the foot but not actually transfer the weight so it's, it's it gives us our drive for moving forward so if I have my back to you, here is a basic step, and then there's a part of beret. So if you start with weight on your left foot for the moment and have the right foot back, just touching, you're going to bend. Let's do it on the flat for the moment. Bend and the heels are touching, but the right foot's off the ground. Step forward and transfer on the right foot, then the left foot, and then the right foot. So I'm just doing this straight at the moment, not going on the toes. And we'll count one, two, three, bend four, transfer one, two, three. And on count four, you'd bring that left foot in in a bend, ready to start again. So if we just do that um, on the flat foot, don't worry about the rise for the moment. One, two, three, bend four, and step, and step, and step, bend, and one, two, three, four one two three four one two three bend four so obviously there's some of you i know who've done baroque dance so you can obviously add in that demi coupe and go on the toes for those that like to go on the toes okay don't worry so much about this place in the ball of foot but just get the feel of going down to arrive up so although the music which i'll put on soon um you know you feel like it's the end of the musical bar it's not for us okay so one two three four to come up 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 down up 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 down up 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 down up 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 so this is a part of array in duple time so i could do this step for rigadons gavots and bourrées up up up, down it has three transferences of weight and there are loads of variations just going to warm up my machine again i've got a bit of bar here now as i said there's a range of tempi we can use for each dance depending on the content but what's important from a dance point of view is for the musicians not to stretch and you know speed up the music so no rubato because it's really quite hard for the dancers to keep a constant beat with some of the steps we always have contrast in baroque so you'll have slow dances that will have moments of quickness and you have fast dances that have moments of stillness so i can do a speed change on this machine so here is um, the recording it's a very old one actually so you have half a bar upbeat and in fact our first step would actually start on, on the downbeat so obviously we're bending on count four so for us let's just see if that tempo will work so um you need to unmute yourself if you find it's too fast i can slow it down okay i just thought we'd start with the 
the beat. So it only has two beats upbeat. And just to remind ourselves of that step again. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's try that tempo. Uh, I think it's quite hard, and, and I suppose Zoom is really great. But one of the issues about Zoom is that you will probably hear the music at a slightly um, different time that I'm hearing it. Okay. And also, because there's no introduction, only those two upbeats, it can be quite tricky to start on time. But let's give that a go. Now, the interesting thing, when I listen to that music, that seems an okay tempo. As soon as I start doing the steps, I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be a little bit fast. So I think I'll slow it down a little bit. Let's try this. Let's hear it first. Okay, let's try that and see if that's a bit better. Okay, here we go. So how did you get on? Did you still find that a bit quick? It wasn't exactly slow, was it? That was fine. That was fine for everybody? Everybody happy with that? Much better. Good. Now the hopping quality, as Madison said, is its true character. There are step names, as you probably noticed, I said part de bourree, but that part de bourree step is not just for bourrees, it's for all dance types, okay, all rhythms. But the um, we have a special step called a contretemps de gavotte, and that actually is also used in duple, triple and compound duple time, so you can get it in sarabands as well. But let's have a look at that because it's a, a really interesting step. Now, the part of beret will change feet. Okay, so let's just do the part of beret again. Three, four, hole, one, two, three, four, hole, one, two, three, four, hole, up, 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 down, one, two, three, four. Okay, now the contretemps de gavotte, I say contretemps for short is one hop and two transferences of weight so if i do the hop if i start with my weight on my left foot i i tend to do the hop where i'm taking my leg out to then transfer it other people hop um and land on the toes i i when i hop i'm going to go into a bend so if we just do a little bend straighten rise lower bend straighten rise lower and then blend down and up because that's the mechanics we're going to need but actually jump in the air okay so if you have any knee injuries or things like that or hips just be careful and you can do what i call as a lilt so instead of doing a hop you can just lift the leg off and rise so my heels coming off the ground taking my other leg out and then i go back down before i rebound or you can do it as a, a hop a spring right so if i have my right leg behind three four four one then step two step three bend four so it has one hop three four hop and land one i'm going to rebound off that leg and step two second step three and then i bend four so it won't change feet so if you want to try that with the other leg got weight on the right leg three bend four hop step step bend so the best thing to do with the contretemps is to alternate that with a part de beret to change feet so if i start with the weight on my left leg three four one two three four then part de beret with my right foot one two and i've changed feet so now i can hop on the right contretemps de gavotte and part de beret Would everybody like to have a go at that? Let's try it with the music. I'm actually going to let a bit go first. Three, four, one, two, 
Get ready. Three, bend, hop, step, step, bend, up, 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 bend, hop, step, step, bend, up, 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 down, hop, step, step, bend, up, 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 down. How was that, everybody? Did that feel a bit too fast? If you do one step unit and you keep repeating it, that makes it easier than doing a mix of steps. So would you like to do that a bit slower? Yes, no? Yes, please. A bit slower. Okay, let me... One on its own first. Right. What, the part of or the contretemps by itself? Contretemps. Contretemps. Okay, yes. It can be a tricky step, that. Um, well, try this tempo. We'll do it without music to start, okay? Everybody happy with the, the part of beret? Let's just go over that. Wait on one foot. Three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, step, 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 down to come up for the first beat, down to arrive, down to arrive. Okay, now our contretemps de gavotte, let's try a couple on the same foot, so we won't alternate, it is a bit tricky. Wait on your left foot, we're going to hop on the left foot, take the right leg out and do two steps afterwards, so one, two, three three bend four hop one step two step three bend four hop it out step step bend hop it out step step now pas de bray, right left right and then we've changed feet so three contretemps and a pas de bray. again so i'm starting with weight on my right foot one two three bend four hop out step step bend hop out step step Bend, hop out, step, step, bend and pas de bourre. Maybe let's try that, okay? With music. I'll let the music play a little bit first. I'm starting with to my left. Three, four, hop, step, step, bend, hop, step, step, bend. Rebound off the foot. Three steps to transfer the weight. How did you get on? Any questions, anybody? No? You have to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. No, okay. That's just one, one step. That's what has the title of Contrôle de Gavotte mixed in with the Pas de Beret. But there are loads of variations. And in Baroque dance, we can embellish just as in music. So a way to embellish dance step is to add an extra movement on an extra bend and rise. And when you add an extra bend and rise, it becomes a little spring. So a spring can be just a little lilt or a big, a slightly bigger spring called a, we call them a jeté or a demi jeté, small jeté. And you go from one foot to the other. So if I bend here, my weight's on my left foot, I, I'm going to take my right leg out and it will spring onto it. And then I'm going to spring onto the left. So in duple time, I'd have two in a bar. So if I was doing that in Gavotte, I'd have three, four, one, two, three, four. And again, what I'm doing is when I land, I'm rolling toe ball, heel, bend the knee. So if you'd like to do a little bit more of a bend, straighten and rise and lower, blending into the bend and pushing off the ball of the foot. So using the foot to help rebound so I'm rolling through my feet, bending the knees. 
so that I'm controlling and coming down so I'm not using the joints and I'm not just dropping the weight. So I'm trying to have a little bit of a lift when I'm doing the springs. So if I was going to do an extra movement in the gavotte step, the contrepreneur de gavotte, I would have to substitute the last step. So I'll just show it actually in a part de beret. So three, four, one, two, my third step would be step and bend. So instead of doing the third step, I do the two steps, three, four, one, two. Then I'm going to do my mo extra movement. So I'm going to bend first and then rise, which becomes a little spring. So adding an extra movement, an extra bend and rise, that doesn't change the number of transferences of weight. So with my pas de beret, three, four, up, up, up down left right left bend right left right bend i can do my part of beret in two movements also known as a true part of beret it was used in france but it went out of favor but um it was used in england a lot actually so quite a lot of english sources use this step so three four step step bend little lilt step step bend little spring and so i'm when i spring i'm bringing my I'm not leaving my leg behind i'm bringing my leg in so i can come forward again for the next step so let's try that first before we try the contraton three four step step bend little spring step step bend little spring up up bend spring one two three four four one two three four four one two three four okay now then doing the contraton here's our contraton three four hop one step two step three bend four so only two steps in the contraton after the spring so after my hop bend take the leg out step on it now i'm going to bend on it and then spring three four one step on the toes two bend three put the heel down then four spring so again adding the extra movement doesn't ex give you extra transferences of weight so hot tom two movements three four Hop, step, bend, spring. Try that on the other foot. Wait on the right. Three, bend, four, hop, one, step. Oh, I didn't, went wrong myself, didn't I? I was thinking of something else. Ready? Three, four, hop, step, bend, spring. That's quite a nice articulation with the footwork. Let's try that with the music so contra tom into movements hop step bend spring let's the music go a bit three four hop step bend spring so it has a different feel to an ordinary contra tom three four hop step bend spring and instead of two steps after the hop again here we go three four hop step step bend part of the ray and change feet contra tommy two movements three four hop step bend spring so they do feel very different but that's just one example of how you can actually embellish the step any questions so far well we can also add beats in so we can take one leg and beat it so if we're beating a leg all we're doing is we're bringing the leg in maybe from the back and then step back on it or we um, have it in front and we can beat it in front so 
if we are in a bend the both legs will bend and if we're on a rise both legs will be straight so i could do a beaten contretemps now these are um, found in again in buries in in gavots in rigodons uh, but also in, in a lot of compound duple steps. So I would start in an open position, maybe. So my hop, step, step, I would hop on my back foot, but I bring my front leg in. So I can start on two feet, hop, and then I would can step forward and do step and carry on the step. Or I could actually beat the second step as well. So I'd have hop, step, beat. So three four one two and three bend four hop beating beat step beat back bend so the timing of the step hasn't really altered i'm transferring the weight i did just an ordinary contra tom three four one two three my, my last step would be on beat three and then i'd bend four so i'm doing exactly the same thing three four one two and three bend four and you can have the contretemps the part of beret most steps can be done forwards backwards sideways so again that adds a whole new dimension if i uh, do a contretemps sideways i can actually transfer the weight to the leg that's free so instead of hop step step i can do it sideways four hop step step release but i could also do it sideways in the direction but with the same leg three four hop and i cross in front and i finish in second position which is dance um women as well as men although it doesn't look so neat i mean i'm holding my skirts up now i'm actually wearing a costume which is from about 1720 so you can see my footwork just about okay but actually prior to this period all the dresses would have been like a fraction of an inch off the ground so you really wouldn't see the ladies footwork but if you were dancing uh, with a partner you'd see the gentleman's footwork but um i think the modern audience are a bit more obsessed about people's footwork normally in baroque you would just look at the whole so has anybody got any questions so far so Philippa, you, you've, um, sorry, I'll put my camera on. Um, you've shown us a number of sort of variations you can do, but to, to what extent were they systematized? I mean, obviously if, were people, you know, whole groups of people dancing these dances together, in which case, presumably they all had to do the same thing at the same time. Well, um, ballroom dances are, are for one couple dancing at a time. Right. So they can have one couple dancing um, a dance. There are actually some ballroom dances for four as well, but then you also have theatrical uh, dances. So um, basically you'd have a dancing master giving you lessons on the steps, but um, I'm showing you uh, variations that how you can um, alter steps, but in the choreographies, they would actually um, dictate what the steps were. Right. So it wasn't anarchy. <laughs> No, oh no, no. Although <laughs> arm, arm actions, you can do different arms. I haven't talked about arms yet. Let me just, where's my, I'm losing my mouse. It's not working properly, hang on. Um, just want to get the spotlight. Here's a gavotte. I need to put my glasses on. This is why it's hard to wear a wig. All right, <laughs> so this is um, a gavotte. Here's the half bar. And uh, the other thing I want to show you is a lot of these dances will show you a half bar rest before they start. And I'm not sure if that's partly done. Um, well, actually, I'm just going to show another example of what they do instead of the half bar rest. This is actually as it should go with the music. So what you get in the notation is you have the melody line here okay, at the top. And so you have the bars of music which relate um, to the dance bars here. So this is, starts in an open position fourth and in fact the front leg is going backwards and the back leg is going forward and you're jumping. So you're changing legs from fourth position left foot in front here for the lady. 
all right and that's the man symbol lady has the double line here and you change legs forward back so it's change change and join together then a part of beret uh, a, a, a rise and point the foot no weight on it and repeat put it down and spring again um here this is an interesting dance this is a new dance for a girl <laughs> quite, quite sophisticated so i just want to show you what's happening here for the um gavotte whoops um there oh sorry my mouse wasn't working here here we are the symbol for the girl see the, this is a step you read from the pinhead this step has no movement no bend and rise sign okay so that is for the half bar so a few gavot dances have this single step on the flat with no bends and rises to make sure that you start the dance at the beginning of the first full bar as opposed to when the melody starts so either you'll get a step with a you know a half bar rest with nothing or you would get like a single step no movement at all okay so this is quite a tricky dance actually for a, a young girl there's lots of variety this is a contretemps this is the hop um this is hopping and stepping um so i'm traveling towards my gesture leg this is um a coupe the coupe par coupe has two transferences of weight but this is a two movement one bend rise bend spring there's that's actually the notation of a part of beret and it repeats a coupe variation part de beret this is a part of beret crossing over crossing side and go behind and a rise and step um part de beret backwards coupe and there's part de berets glissades so there's quite a variety of steps here and i'll just show you that's not too much on a page but look at this page this is quite a bit's happening there yeah lots of springs so there's lots there's contratons but there's other variety of steps so uh, you you do get quite a mix and this is just much like a look at the last page so little gestures this is a rise and take the leg behind and then spring forward so there's quite a variety and i wanted to show you this is a theatrical gavotte for two women all right so um it was danced in an opera and this is published in uh, circa 1713 and um quite a bit more sophisticated than that duet bavier which was a ballroom dance okay so you've got part berets again various steps springing lots of hops in here you have even you know turns hopping turns you've got turning contretemps there that's a contretemps uh, with a half turn on the first step and then another quarter of a turn so there, there's lots happening and that's a contretemps batu in fact so here it is this would be the left foot coming in front you hop bring it in step forward and it shows you it beating back and i demonstrated that step so all the choreographies that you have you know are telling you what to do and usually the timing in which to do it as well so we have quite a lot of information we have around about just over um 350 not notations i mean there are lots of um dances that you might find in manuscripts as well as in printed sources so it's quite interesting to sometimes look at the variations so that's just an example of a couple and here's a gavotte for four okay so this has the half bar rest here but this is very very basic it's a contretemps and you spring to first and then step back so there's again using the step in the half a bar so if we did this step called a par assemble by itself and you have a half bar rest i think that when you're new to doing baroque dance and doing gavotte is the tricky moment because you'd have um here we go three four four one two three four one two three four one two three four you'd have to wait you know and it's, it's for some people getting used to that um i mean you get to the springs on their own 
a par assemble with half bar s it's like a punctuation point really um but you get it in gavots you get it in bourrees you get it also in triple time as well so you do get variety but it's very easy with the hearing the melody of a gavotte that you want to start at the very beginning of that music not wait so that's one of the tricks um it's getting used to doing certain things but Jane, yes could you could you show us on those scary looking copies how they relate to the phrase lengths you know because the, the um, there's a standard number of bars isn't there and there's yeah. always a repeat yeah well actually it depends on on the dance type so oh. um so let me go to Babette. Okay. Oh, actually, hang on a minute. Why don't I do a bit of a sibling? The thing is, how much music is on the page is to do with how much room there is for the notation. So you won't necessarily see an eight bar phrase of music on on each page. That would be nice and simple. But whatever music you've got on the page is for the music, uh, you know, so it might be that it's it's doing um, all of a it might be a little bit more. So it just depends. You know, because if you see how many bars are here compared, you can just see by the lines of, of, of music, you've got fewer bars on the page two than you have on page one. And then I think page three had quite a lot of stuff on as well. Yeah. And then page four. But do, does something significant in the dance happen at the ends of those eight bar phrases or does it just sort of go smoothly on well it, yeah this is a binary form this particular one so yes. um it just it, it, it you know then the music may repeat or in fact it's you know written out here i think but uh, generally speaking um you just you flow through it right. um with the uh, babette the music is a, a rondo in format oh you know but you're still doing certain things so that's the first page you've got change change spring weight part of bure point the foot change change spring weight part of bure point and here's the second part you're doing part on base you go away from your partner back in and face them but again you know it just depends on how much they want to put on you know so um it really depends on how much um how long how much uh, space the dance takes up i mean in some of the english sources you might actually have a page where it's divided in two and you have the notation here and at the bottom as well for the same you know amount of music but you do one bit after the other so it could have a repeat sign and you do the first four bars or it might be eight bars depending and then you do the other eight and it's all with the music up there or um it, it could be um with rest it just depends on the notation itself and how much you can put in so if you had um other triple time dance you're like a shikon or a pasakai then obviously it's through composed again but um Choreographers tend to use like reiterating patterns in certain places, but they don't necessarily use um, the same step units in um, the same piece of music, but some do. So it just depends. So an example would be a dance called the Buru Dashil, and you have a set phrase of steps and it gets repeated. And, it, and then it goes into a minuet and then it returns back to the uh, bure section but the bure section the steps are pretty much identical but the pattern is different so so there is variation does Thank that you. does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely yeah so um i'm just thinking i suppose i will to move on has anybody got any questions about anything so far i mean i've only um shown a couple of steps there's loads of different steps i could demonstrate a little bit from one of the dancers if you like if that would be good 
you know. Yes, that would be nice to see it in context. Okay, well, I'll I'll show a little bit of the um, Sibylline, I think. Let me just get my music. Sorry, this likes to turn itself off. If I'm not using it for a bit. Right. So let's have a just going to put the notation back on. So we've got single step and then could be two movements. That's a little variation with the spring. Part of beret, could be two movements. Part of beret, part of beret sideways, a step going back, part of beret and coupe. Just a little bit here. So, um, let's see if I can remember it. Now, in this recording, I actually have an introduction as well as the upbeats. Oh, hang on. I'm not sure. Was that loud enough? Is everybody okay can hear that? Yeah, that's fine. Right, I'll just do a little bit. I haven't danced this for a few weeks. Unfortunately, they take a lot of space. In my small space you can see that I can't quite fit it all in. Um, it, these dances use a lot of space and when you get asked to do things they think how many dancers are there and they think if you've only got one or two dancers you're not going to need a lot of space but you need as much space for one dance as you do for two or three and sometimes the patterns and dances for fours don't take as much space up as the ones for two and three so I have a two meter dance mat here and I really could do with three by three at least four or five meters would be better. Any uh, questions? It's very hard to, I'm sorry, to fit things in uh, in this space. Uh, Any yes, please. Yes. Um, I assume that uh, these dancers or gavots and so on were not being danced below stairs. They were for you're quite and... right yes these, yeah. these are, people would have dancing masters teach them so we're talking about people with money right you and know. um if they were danced at a ball would it be pre-arranged who was going to do do particular dances if they were some just of, yeah some of the ballroom dances are actually more display dances as well so would it be chosen who was going to dance them in advance right. i mean it be, the thing is courtiers um, would actually uh, dance in fact alongside uh, professional dancers as well. I mean the Academy of uh, Dance was founded in 1661 but that really was more for the academic side with dancing masters uh, petitioning uh, Louis XIV so that they could get this um, academy. So this is when we get the codification first published um, by Fouillet in 1700 and you get um, the steps and or 
the way it's notated. And so he had the royal rights, in fact, to uh, produce notation. So for six years, we get a whole collection of his dances, or he actually um, notated the dances. Some of it were his choreographies and others were um, choreographies of, of well-known dancing masters, uh, maybe to, to Louis himself. So we get a whole load of dances uh, written by them. And you have annual collections from 1700, which would be ready for the ballroom. So there'd be the season's dances. Right. So okay. your dancing master would teach. Now the thing is, when you're dancing with a partner, you really, um, you have harmony. Um, I think you could see from the, the, the couple of duets I showed you, it was all sort of mirror, mirror image. Obviously not the solo, but here. This is the theatrical duet. They're both doing exactly the same steps. So this part of axial symmetry here, they're going round sideways, the two ladies. And here, this is a bit of canon. So one lady's doing a part of a variation sideways, then waits a bar, and the other lady waits a bar and does it. She does another step, waits a bar, and this lady waits and then does it. Then they dance together again. Mm. So you get a lot of symmetry. So it, it makes a big difference, I think, you know. Um, there are, theatrical dances are a little bit different. I mean, this is actually a symmetrical dance, but you sometimes get a lot of canon. Um, there's other d examples of dances where, it, you know, just see if I've got it. Can't remember if I, I may not have put it up. Um, no, this is Bavier, this, I'm, that's to go into Fulana, which I needed to talk about. Um, but basically, you're going to get um, dances that are quite complicated. There's just absolutely no way you could actually <laughs> suddenly turn up, except for going to a ball and doing the, the ballroom minuet. That was an actually basic standard, so to speak. And um, again, that's danced one couple of time, and you'd be sitting or standing around the room waiting for your turn to dance. And it was basically a pattern dance. Um, so you have an introduction um leading your lady forward introducing her to the public and then you part and be on the diagonal and then you'd make this z figure which was originally an s curve but was um made simple by um ramo the dancing master not the composer um to z so it's a bit flatter and then you'd have the after that you'd have think of it as a chorus really then you'd have the giving of right hands so the, in, the gentleman would indicate that by actually taking his hat off and putting it in his other hand to show when he's finished doing the Z figures to then offer the right hand. And they'd go around, circle around your partner and go to their diagonal line. And then you'd um, come back in and take left hands. And then you do the Z figures again. And then you do the giving of two hands. And then a lot of dances would reiterate the right hand, left hand and two hands in other dances. So. You know, some dances would be in the ballroom similar to that. But again, it is one couple at a time dancing. Yeah. With country dances that were introduced into France um, by Charles II, uh, and he brought, in fact, Baroque style of court dancing actually over to England, um, then you would have groups of people dancing together. So, yes. but it was a very different thing. And um, I mean, Peep's um, wife had, I think, dancing master would come twice or three times a week for dancing lessons so you know to be um i suppose in a way it's you know you wanted to shine in the ballroom not necessarily just with your um clothing but you know your wealth you're wearing it on your back so your it's your status basically and particularly in france it was very important in fact more important for gentlemen to dance well than it was for a lady so the removing of your hat, the being able to reverence uh, um, in a sophisticated manner were, was quite important. And in fact, if you were dancing at a ball and you weren't very good, you know, you practically could get laughed at and put off and never show your face in court again. There is a, um, I, I don't think I have that on me at the moment, but um, there is a great um, example of that and about a ball at Versailles where the gentleman 
um, was quite new to the court and he said, oh yes, he was pretty good at doing the minuet and he did the minuet, but he fluffed it completely and people were sniggering behind their back. And he said, oh, it's because he was dancing in front of the king and, you know, but he, he'll do it again. And they had a ball in the second night as well, you know, and they go on to like five in the morning. I don't know how they did it really. Of course, they didn't do any work, so. Uh, so anyway, apparently he got up again to dance again, and it was so bad he was actually laughed off the oh. dance floor. And he actually then retired to his country retreat for a while because he didn't dare show his face because of the embarrassment of being so bad. <laughs> See, if you can't dance well, you just wouldn't really get up and do it. So even if you have lessons from the age of about six, you're not necessarily going to be particularly good at it. But then you don't get up and try and do it. You know, you should just politely <laughs> refuse to, to do the dancing. So okay. what did they do for music when they were having these lessons? Oh, or did they not bother? Uh, yes, well, the dancing master had what's called a pochette, which is a little pocket violin. Oh, yes. I was looking for my picture of it, and I couldn't find it on my computer, so I'm sorry, I can't show you. There's a lovely one with a dancing master with a little pochette. So it's it's a, a, a like a really thin violin. Yes. Because um, it was actually, you could put it in the pockets, because, of course, the gentleman's clothing, the pockets were quite deep and low. So he would be playing a tune uh, on, on, on the, the pochette, for the, the students to dance to. And giving the instructions at the same time. <laughs> uh, yes, or dem yeah, demonstrating. Yeah. And, well, in fact, um, years ago at summer school, I had a, um, a young lady who was studying at the Welsh College of Music and Drama Violin, and she came and danced and played at my summer school, and she was able to dance and play at the same time. <laughs> so it is possible. <laughs> I really should get on to talking a little bit about the um, the gig, as I was asked to do so. So um, I just have a um, quote about the gig. Now, in fact, with the gigs, there actually is a whole family of gigs. So there's the Falan and the gig and the canary. And uh, tempo-wise, um, Falan is the slowest of the three. They're all obviously in compound duple time, usually written in um, six, uh, four, or six, eight. And you count two in a bar as you i'm sure you know so for the falon um russo mentions that it's moderate or moderately fast and it was particular and popular in venice in theatrical entertainments it's it played a little bit slower and it's a bit more rustic and pastoral feel than the the gig and the gig is a lively dance with lots of sprung steps and moments of balance and the canary now is similar but it's like the gavotte is. So the gavotte has um, a half bar uh, beats and the bure doesn't. And okay, that's the same with the canary has half bar uh, um, uh, beats and the gig doesn't. So they're, they're quite similar in that sense. So um, Matheson says about the gig, hot and hurried eagerness, anger that soon evaporates. And the canary must be a very desirous quality and quickness but it should be somewhat simple-minded. So it says here by Quance that the gig and the canary have the same tempo. The gig is played with short and light bowings and the canary um, in, consists entirely of dotted notes is played with short and sharp ones. So if I just share my screen again, here's a full on. Now, if the music was particularly um, popular at the time, you often get more than one choreography to the same piece of music. So this uh, here, all right, this Falana for two women is a theatrical one. Again, it starts here. You've got the, um, the beat rest up beat here, and you've got part of berets, sideways steps, sprung steps, Parabri variations and this repeats so often like with the music with the full on a couple bars uh, that get sort of repeated or echoed you sort of get um a few steps that then repeat so certain dances do that so this is um part of beret a sliding step to the courant part of stone on boite those four bars repeat and there's your music okay and then you come forward Contretemps, we were doing those. So there's a contretemps in uh, 
Compandruple time, two of those, coupe tombe, and then jete steps and springs, beaten turning contratomb here. And there's that assembly I showed you, but with a step. And once you've gone to two feet, you can stay in mirror image or you can then go to the same foot. And they come towards each other. So there's a lot of springs. It's quite lively, this dance. Um, this is uh, La Triomphe Fountain. This is the same music. And it's the same bar structure. And in fact, there's a third dance called La Paisanne, which um, is also has the same music, but the musical structure of A's and B's is different. But this one is the same. So recording of music for uh, the Triomphant is also the same for the uh, two women. So this is her ballroom dance and the other one was a theatrical dance. And, and then I've got a couple of examples of Gigues. So it's to do more with, well, I suppose the character and the tempo of these dances that makes them slightly different. And let me just show you. Um, I went to the wrong one. The trouble is these are in the way now. Let me move that. Here's a, another jig. This is a solo jig for a male. And, you know, you don't need to read notation to see lots of um, things happening. It's a bit like when you see a piece of music and you've got lots of quartet quavers, etc. You've got, you know, quite a sprung, a lot of sprung steps here. And this says Gigade. This is from Philomel, but actually it's a canary. Canary. So uh, they don't necessarily say it's a canary, but with the, um, there's also Falanas, which actually they'll say it's a, a jig. Um, well, that's another, um, this is Entre de Bacant, theatrical dance, and this again is a, is a cannery. And I've got one more here. Oh, that's a lure, which is a slow jig, which I wanted to mention if there's time. So with the Falana, I'm just going to actually um, play you. A little bit of music. I've got some examples of uh, different Falanas. There's never enough time, you know. So here's um, the music, La Triomphante. <laughs> And that has the, uh, it's the same music for the uh, ladies duet. I'll just, uh, just show you that a couple of steps. It's jolly and lively, but it's not as lively as, say, a gig. So this this music, this gigade music's by Lully, and um, I have the notation. It's for a duet. It's published in seventeen hundred. And the interesting thing is when you have gigs, you have well, actually, any particular dance, depending on the most complicated step units within the dance, so that kind of helps you decide on a tempo. But the start of this dance, it's really interesting musically. Um, I remember when musicians were playing it for me. So I have to put my glasses on again. Just to move these things around so I can find it. I think it might be this one. No, it's not. Oh dear. I'm sure I had it unless I've accidentally got rid of it. Let me just see if I can find. Oh. 
with Giga de. There we go. Sorry about that. So. There's your music. Now, um, when the musicians were playing that for a recording I had done, they wrote on the note, on the, on the actual um, music, they wrote very fast and underlined it. And the interesting thing is it doesn't feel that fast because um, we have um, a contraton balané, so it's a variation. Instead of hop, step, step, you have hop the leg out and then you spring onto it. So um, if you start doing that and you've got two actions in a bar, then it, that seems, you know, the music can feel quite slow. But when you get to do um, part de berets and the contretemps, you've got three actions, you've got hop, step, step. This is, these are sideways contretemps. Um, it can feel then a bit too fast. So getting the balance between the easier steps and the most difficult steps to get a, a one tempo um, is important. So often you have to find that moment in the dance where you feel that, that you know, you need to do uh, that at a certain tempo. And of course, depending on the ability of the dancers, you know, they can take slower things slower and faster things faster. So I'll, I'll just do a tiny bit of the opening of the Chigade. And you notice that I, when I was just doing some demonstrating, I was adding arms in, which I haven't really talked about. And they move in harmony. So if I've got my right leg forward, I would oppose it. So if I did a part de beret step, I would take my right foot forward and I would oppose by bringing up my arm. Now, the, the way the arms are done, there's lots of different ways of doing it. There's, uh, in fact, a few ways, but it's amazing how much variety there is. It's like having a lock with three or four combinations. You know, have three uh, number combination, that gives you a variety. If you have four, it adds on extra things. So I can move my arms up and back down, and I can do little wrist actions. I can open up and I can come down i can have sharp movements so again you usually accent um the forward step but not always so for instance i could do the contraton to go up the one that we showed you. if i started my arms up i could just do down but i could also um make a more generous shape by opening up okay there's lots of things you can do or it could just be a little wrist action but this particular dance the giga de um has um, contraton balanés. So if I start, you've got contraton balané, contraton balané, pas de bourre, then two springs. Okay. I'll just show a little bit of that. <laughs> Repeat of the pattern of steps, but you'll cross with your partner the second time. And so it keeps going. So that music is much livelier than the full on. Yes, but I could do all the same steps in both. Would you like to have a little go at having? Just try that part of beret stepping compound duple time to see how it adjusts to the musical bar. So if we go over our part of beret in the beret that we did on the gavotte in duple time, we had the bend on the end of the musical bar for one, two, three, bend four, one, two, three, bend four. So. Obviously, I didn't do it, but you can count in two. So that would be in duple one and two and a one and two and a one and two. But the action of the part of beret compound duple time is similar to in triple. So we're going to do our first step. So we're going to bend, enter the musical bar and come up take our second step and then go into the bend and when we go into the bend that's actually the second half of the bar so in compound duple time one two one two up 
up down one two one two so the second step of the pas de bourre in compound triple time is shorter in time but the length of step should be the same so try it i'm starting with it on my left one two and one two up up down and up up down and one two do you want to try that with a bit of music? Um, we can use, actually, I can get another jig for you. Right. Let's see what this one's like. So that's quite quick one. I'll make it slower. Okay, so a bit slower. I've slowed it down. Well, just like, and there's no introduction on this, so a bit of Bach, orchestral suite um, number three, this is. One and two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one two. Now you could do your contratemps to go about hot step step. So the last step would go into the bend. One and two, one and two. So it feels quite quick. Not the same step as I was showing at the beginning of that dance. Hard raise. One two and one two. Up up down. Up up down. Up up down. Now you might find the contratom ballonne an easier step to do. So the contratom you had hop in two steps. So if you just did your hop, the leg out, hop, then little spring onto it. One, two, one, spring two, and then you push off one, spring two. Okay, try little springs, they're called jetés. Spring one foot, spring the other. One, two, two in the bar. And the first phrase of that dance is hop, spring, hop, spring, pas de bourre, that's your three steps, then two springs. So let's try that slowly. One, two, hop, spring, hop, spring, pas de bourre, up, up, down, leap, leap. That's your little jetés. Let's try this the part of beret, jeté, jeté. One, two, up, up, down, spring, spring. Try the other foot. I'll go my back to the camera again. Wait on my right leg, part of beret. One, two, one, two, spring, spring. Step, 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 bend, spring. Let's just try that with the music. I'm starting with my left foot, part of brain, spring, spring. Get ready. One, two, up, up, down, spring, spring, up, up, down, spring, spring. So you might find that the part of beret feels quite quick to that tempo, but when you do those two little springs, it does feel a bit slower, doesn't it? So get in a right balance. For the trickier steps and more actions happening in the bar is is a quite a, an art basically try to try that again let's start with weight on the right foot this time one part of beret and two springs oh, I just wait for the phrase here we go one two up up down spring spring up up down Spring, spring, part of the race, your taze, your tay, part of the race, your taze, your tay. I hope some of you were able to have a little go. Yes? Yes. Yes, that was an easier. Different? I found that much easier. Isn't that interesting? And you found the part of beret easier and the spring easier or easier than the uh, contrapuntal gavotte? 
Yeah, that, that last bit was much easier than the previous. Yes. So how much is because you've already done the previous? I don't know. But some, <laughs> sometimes, yes. So it's true. It, it Also, it depends on what you're used to doing as well. And I think you'll recognize in these Baroque steps certain things if you do other types of dance. You'll see links coming in all over the place with certain things. Um, so there's quite a variety of, of steps. I do have... Um, a so that solo jig for a man. I have a, a video of that if, if people would like to see it. The uh, only problem can be that um, sometimes with the zoom it doesn't come out. So perhaps I'll just leave that to the end. Um, I should stop for the moment and find out if you have any questions. Please unmute and ask. We're just scraping the surface of Baroque dance. Can I ask about playing for dance? Um, yes. What makes it easy for you and what makes it difficult? OK, well, having rubato in a, a play when you're playing for dance yeah. is an absolute no-no. No, no. no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting a balance for musicians that you've not got it's like a metronomic um rhythm going and that becomes mechanical you want to have life but actually um the way you play so for instance a jig um if you play it heavily like with a down bow uh for instance um it's hard it doesn't give you enough lift so sometimes it isn't the tempo particularly i think with like things like jig is that the lightness of the touch will help you give it lift for you to dance it you know so it's not always strictly to do with the tempo not being suitable it's the way it's played i was um, thinking as i was watching you that um it's to do with thinking two beats in a bar and not six you know this is oh, something absolutely. that <laughs> now absolutely. say that again please <laughs> okay, so if, think of two pulses in a bar two dotted uh, crotchets yes. for instance yeah. that your compound duple or it could be two dotted minims as well yeah so um the thing is because of that you know it, it feels quite different um yeah. so, so often musicians will say oh this is complicated i'm going to count it in six and it it, it makes a huge difference i think absolutely yeah for, for definitely for this you want to think of counting in two two pulses in the bar Good. um yeah ab absolutely because otherwise it's very heavy you want you can count in six if you want to count minuet because you get two um bars of triple time a three four time yeah. for the one bar of minuet steps and less than dance music is written in six four there are a few that are written in six four so when you have then one um one bar of six four for the music but the interesting thing actually is i'm going to share my screen again and show you a giglant so there's a gig in six four and i think this is um in six four also now musicians often would look at that and think oh it's a jig but it's a jig lent is also known as a lure but it's definitely not a jig slowed down a jig has one step unit in a bar of six counts okay but the lure has two so what you get with the lure is a duple pulse with an underlying triple beat so here this is six four but this has two step units so this has a, a, a coupe so that's a step with a, a leg gesture and then you sp spring the foot to down and then you hop the leg out and step on it and you've got a beat and turning contretemps and close the foot so that's the bend spring half a turn beat it behind hop then step on it and then close the foot and then it repeats at the side coupe leg in the air okay spring hop place beaten contraton so this will feel very very different but musically when you look at it it looks as though you could play it as a jig 
but there's a real difference between a jig and a, and a lure. So next time you get to play lures, you want to think about having two step units. So if I did, um a couple of steps so if i for instance i won't do the contretemps ballonet mm -hmm. well i could do actually in laws you actually do get contretemps balance and um, they can be actually sort of sideways as well as forward but if i was counting in a jig and i'll just do my part of beret one mm -hmm, two one mm -hmm, two But if I was doing a lure, I would have two pot of berets and they'd be in triple time. One, two, one, two, two in a bar. So the beginning of that, that lure, let's get my music here. You can hear the music. I just want to speed this up a little bit actually, hang on. So it feels quite different. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So, as you can see, it's a completely different dance type. We, we've only got a few minutes left now, Philippa, so... Uh, um, I'll just tell you what Matheson says about the law. Yes. Yeah. Laws, slow and dotted, exhibit a proud and pompous character, which makes <laughs> them very popular in Spain. But... <laughs> Pompous, we're talking 18th century use of the word, which means pomp ceremony, so majestic, etc. <laughs> so, I, I, I must read you this. This is from Quants, um, and I got this information from actually um, a Telemann wedding suite, and it's in the um, information about dance music. If the dancers as well as the orchestra could keep to one tempo, they would be spared much vexation. It is well known that most dancers have little or no understanding of music, and often no idea of the right tempo, so that they often adapt it to their tempo or their physical condition. Experience also teaches us that dancers in rehearsals, when these take place in the morning, when they are still sober and dancing in cold blood, seldom require such a lively tempo as during performance which is usually in the evening when partly due to the good nourishment they have partaken and partly due to many spectators and owing to ambition they become more fiery than during rehearsal so there you have it <laughs> all our fault <laughs> <laughs> would you like me to conclude with showing um, a video uh, I think that would be a lovely ending. Yes. So perhaps I'll, I'll just say before you put that on, um, thanks very much indeed. I think we've, we've all enjoyed that. We've all learned a lot. Um, it, it's fascinating to see the interplay between the music um, and particularly that last bit, you know, a lure, you, you see it and you think, well, what's one of those? Because th there aren't nearly as many of them as yes, there exactly, are. Yeah. You, you've shown us not just that it's completely different, but why it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that was terrific. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. If you have other questions that didn't like to ask him during the time, um, you could send them to Claire and she can pass them on to me. If That's very in, kind. Thank you. If you're in a little bit of Baroque dance, you could look at my website. I don't do it. Somebody else does it for me because I do online classes and I'll be doing some live ones soon. And musicians are always welcome to, to attend. So that's ukbarockdance.com. You search Baroque Dance, hopefully you'll find it or search me. So um, can we do the conventional Zoom thing, please? Oh. <laughs> I'll do an 18th century reverence then. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And I'm sorry, there's 
it's always there's always loads to talk about and never enough time because you know you could take each different dance type and look at the triple separately and in triple there's a vast variety as well so you don't have to subdivide that out um but thank you very much for your patience and i hope you got a little inkling of of, of the connection between music and dance and might be inspired to think a little bit about how you would play a dance piece now having seen a little bit of the dance but remember there's variety it's available so if everybody turns their videos off and i will myself too can, um, can i just sorry rebecca's just put a question in the chat oh right yes uh, she's asking she says thanks for a really interesting workshop what manuscripts did your notation examples come from oh, okay so um some of them the different ones they're different collections so um babette um was annual collection and the, um and that was i think 1704 uh, there's a whole um collection each year from 1700 on the gigado comes from 1700 uh, i think sibling was a bit later i haven't got all the dates on me but they're all from a variety but they're all within the first quarter of the of the 18th century Thanks. But if you want more information about the notations, then email me uh, and I can tell you. I mean, loads of stuff's available online. In fact, on my website, some of the dances, um, I have a CD and it has examples of the music. And it also tells you on there where the dance notation's from. And it gives you links to online stuff. So um, Bibliotheque Nationale uh, and also America, um, they have a huge uh, number as well. And if there's anyone in particular people want, you could email me and I could probably send it to you. Okay. Right, so I'm going to turn my video off. And it, I hope this comes out. I, it just depends because, you know, sometimes the internet's a bit precarious. So, so this is that solo gig for a man. I hope the volume's okay.